the slowdown. Is basically, uh, Coach Willie Scroggs trying to figure out this new offense. Jack, Coach Jack Ever must be delighted at how this is working out so far. Yeah, what's been key is we've gotten the early opening goals and then we've had the ground balls and the face-offs, possession of the ball that's allowed us to go into this offense with the lead. We're in the driver's seat right now. I noticed one thing during that timeout that Coach Scroggs was vehemently on the official and I'm sure he's trying to get his uh, case in and trying to make make some heads or tails out of what can and what can't be done to this shell offense that WNL has been employing. This must have been one of the best kept secrets on the WNL campus in a long, long time. I'm kind of surprised that UNC didn't get wind of it a little earlier. I hear... Well, there was an article in the Roanoke Times this morning that said WNL may use uh, four corners offense versus Carolina, but uh, I think they may have expected, but nothing quite this drastic, I'm sure. Sansero's got the ball all by himself out front. He misses the goal, and UNC stopped the ball from going out, and now they're going to clear it. Sears tosses the ball up the field to number 36. That's Steve Stennerson. He takes it across. He has Stu Kinney on, on him. He's going down the left side, looking for Sean across the middle. He brings it out. UNC will set up their offense. Number 43, Brent Vogel with Newton Kendrick on him. Kendrick knocks the ball away, and he's got it back. The Generals have the ball. And the, the, he'll bring it back and use a slow down clear. Generals are playing excellent defense across the field to number 32, Dave Nichols. Nichols has a big open field. He looks across. He takes it across himself. The Generals aren't offsides. And he's going to take it into the goal. He's going to shoot. And he's scored. Newton Kendrick. Def Generals defenseman scores. The Generals take a 3 0 lead. I guess no one expected him to shoot and took it down the field. Oh, by, no, that was Dave Nichols, excuse me, all by himself. That's great to see a defenseman take that ball to the goal like that. No one picked him up. He went right down five yards outside of the crease on the left-hand side and banged it home on the inside pipe on goalie Sears, who seems a bit shocked right now. And I'm surprised. Well, it always seemed harder to stop a defenseman's shot because they have so much more leverage and it's harder to tell where the ball is going to come from. Sometimes those defensemen don't even know where they're shooting. They just try to get it on goal, but that was well placed by Nichols. 3-0 uh, lead here. Schoenberg is back out of the midfield and facing off. On the face off for Carolina, good walls for Washington and Lee Schoenberg. Okay, Carolina controls the face off. That's number 10, Johnny Basil. He's got Sansilla on him. They'll slow it down. Passes off to number 18, Jeff Homer. He has it in the middle. And there's Schoenberg on him. They go into their office. Omar moves toward the goal, brings it back out. Looking for Sona. He's going to take it by himself. Shot and score. Okay, UNC finally gets on the board. Three to one. Omar just, that was a nice shot. Just whizzed it past where Palmer's chest or stick, I guess. Okay, so UNC uh, gets one score back. It's three to one. Generals up with 2:48 left in the first period. A very slow game. Key thing there was that UNC changed their face-off man. They went with number 25, Kevin Griswold, and he seemed to control the face-off, whereas Stenerson hadn't been able to do that. Okay, Carolina's bringing in different personnel. He's got Griswold in there facing off against Schoenberg, who's been very successful so far, and the ball. Still loose, no one's possession, and Johnny Basil picks it up for UNC. So UNC gets the ball back again after that score. He passes out to Brent Focal on the left, out front. Number that's now number 25. Kevin Griswold's got it back. Passes into the middle. Nice move by number 19. That'd be Dave Wingate, attackman from Baltimore, Maryland, just spun around and got it past Ware Palmer. I guess this is what Jack Emmer was worried about when, the, when if Carolina gets the ball. Uh, they've cut a 3 nothing lead down to 3-2. And the Generals, I guess, will have to go back into their style offense. They'll need the ball back again. Out there facing off now for Carolina will be number 25, Kevin Griswold against Rich Schoenberg, number 30, the freshman for the Generals. On the face-off for Carolina, Griswold for Washington. These face-offs are really crucial here. And Carolina's come up with the last two and scored both times. And the ball's loose. Looks like Griswold might get it, and he does. Here, come the, here comes Carolina again. They've won. They've had possession the last. This is the third time in a row they scored the last two times. Griswold takes it by himself. He's on Schuler. He's on Schuler. Shot saved by Ware Palmer. Hard shot by number 18, Jeff Omar. Just scored, and Basil's got the ball now. He shoots and over the goal, and number three, Mike Burnett, chases it down. It'll be Carolina's ball behind the goal. That was a nice save by Palmer's. Basil was only 12 yards out front of the crease. 
really let a high rocker go, but Palmer was on it, deflected over the goal. Okay, so Burnett will have the ball behind the WNL goal. Burnett, of course, UNC's leading scorer. He had four goals last year in the championship game against North Carolina, I mean against Hopkins, first team All-American on attack. And there's some delay. Jack Emmer, Coach Emmer has talked, oh, he's chasing people away from the sidelines. Okay, here comes Carolina's offense. They have, Burnett has the ball behind, number 32. Dave Nichols is on him. He goes around the, turns and shoots, scores. He beat Dave Nichols on the left side of the goal and just jumped up there and whizzed it past where Palmer says. Now ties score it, three to three. Looks like Phil Aiken's getting ready down there on the sidelines. Where maybe coming out for a breather here and get his thoughts together. It's Aikens. And here comes number three, Phil Aiken, the sophomore goalie from Dix Hills, New York. You can't really fault Palmer. He didn't have, I mean, this is the first action he's had throughout the whole game. He must be getting, is warming up at the beginning of the game. is worn off, I guess. <laughs> All right, at the midfield, we have Tunney facing off, and he gets the ball back. Generals have the ball. Tunney brings it down the right side. He looks out front again, and Schuler's got it out front, uh, out right front. Sansero's out there. Schuler's by himself. Looks like he's going to go isolation against number 26, Andy Smith, sophomore midfielder from Annapolis, Maryland, for the UNC. Schuler takes it. He's going behind the goal, right side. Now directly behind the goal, Schuler keeps the ball. WNL offense just adjusting to where Schuler is. As long as he stays in the attack zone, the referee can't say anything. And Schuler's looking for someone breaking on the crease, I guess. Smith is still on him. Schuler trots around to the front again. He's out right front. Mike Lors is out there in the front, but Schuler keeps the ball. Schuler now he's reversed his direction and gone back behind the goal. I think Coach Emmer probably hopes to hold the ball, get the last shot of the quarter, and then go out of the second quarter. The referee is saying keep it in, but the ball, I guess he wants him to go toward the goal. Well, they, they're just, if they can't step outside of the box now, Frank. If they do, they lose possession of the ball. They don't necessarily have to go to the goal as long as they keep the ball inside that box. Andy Smith looks like he's trying to trap Schuler out by the goal, out by the end, restraining line, but Schuler goes behind the goal, now left behind the goal on the side. Rob Stigaitis is there, but Schuler keeps the ball. Schuler's just sort of circling the goal, waiting for the open shot or waiting for a man to pop out from the crease who's open. Now Schuler's behind again. He's just circling the goal. 28 seconds left in the first quarter. The fans don't seem to mind the slowdown. Waiting for the last shot. Schuler's the quickest and most agile player on the team. Uh, hard to keep up with man-to-man. -man, almost impossible. All right, 15 seconds left. Generals want to score. They better make a move to the goal quick. 10 seconds. Schuler still has a ball. Doesn't seem to be making... I don't know how much time's left. Six, five, four. He's... he's in, Okay. They were content to run it out, let, let the first quarter end. I guess they didn't want to give UNC another shot on the goal. All right, so Phil Aiken stays out of the goal. Looks like someone's going to head out. Yeah, Coach Kevin Gray's going to head out there to warm him up. Okay, and now while we wait for the second quarter to begin, we'll take a brief break, and we'll be right back. I don't hear anything at the station. Okay, here we are, back at Wilson Field. Frank Jackman with Joe Seifert. Begin the second quarter, tie score, three to three. Generals running a unique offense. Facing off the midfield will be John Tunney. Phil Aiken stays in the goal, just where Palmer was just taken out. And it's Tunney against Tennyson at midfield. Two very strong people battling out, and no possession yet. And dominell has got the ball. John Sansero picks up, he moves toward the goal. He's Brings it down the right side. He's going to shoot. Score! John Sansero, unassisted, just brings the ball right in on Tom Sears. Beautiful move by Sansilio. He just really pursued that ground ball, scooped it up, knew he had a man on him. The man tried to go over his head and check a stick. He missed. Sansilio went down the right-hand side with the man ch chasing him, couldn't catch him, drove the ball home. WNL has a 4-3 lead right at the beginning of the second quarter. It didn't look like the UNC defense slid to pick him up. He had a pretty much an open lane to the goal after he beat his man out front. That was definitely an error by the North Carolina defense. They should have gotten a slide from one of their defensemen, but no one came over to pick up Sansilio as he moved into the goal. All right, out the midfield to be Stenerson and Tunney again, I think. I can't see the UNC man, but I know that's Tunney out there. 
That's Griswold. Yeah, it's Griswold. All right, UNC controls. They bring it down. Fast break. Across the front. There's Brent Focal. Oh, he shoots it over the goal. UNC missed a golden scoring opportunity there. Brent Focal was pretty close in on Phil Aiken, but shot it over the goal. But UNC maintains possession. They'll give the ball to Mike Burnett uh, behind the goal on the right, in the right corner. 14.38 left in the second period. Generals lead 4-3. Burnett gives the ball off to Vocal. Vocal's coming around the right side looking for a man out front. He's got number eight, Doug Hall, off to number 21. Peter Vocal, Brent's brother or cousin, I'm not sure which. Oh, no, it's going to be a slashing on John Buterazzi, I think. And that's it, one minute penalty. The generals be a man down. Buterazzi made a nice play to break off that play. But now Doug will be a man down. 14-24 left here in the second quarter. One thing about this slow down, stall offense, whatever you want to call it, is it's got to take some momentum out of the other team, out of your own team even. And we've seen that. The North Carolina has been a little flat after trying to dislodge the ball for the 10 minutes of the first quarter. And they come out and they're having a little trouble handling the ball maybe, okay. whereas they haven't been in the swing. All right, Brent Vogel's got it out front, passes back. He's got it back again. He's out front, gives the ball off to number 21, Peter Vocal. Vocal has it out in the front. Back down to number 25, Kevin Griswold. And shot, oh, nice shot out there by number 31. That was Ward Steidel, a sophomore midfielder from Narbeth, Pennsylvania. Yeah, beat Phil Aiken. By number 31, Ward so that ties the score up at 4 all with 14.05 left here in the first half. Uh, Looks like the general's defense is, is flat as well. Well, that was an extra man opportunity there. And yeah, that's it was true. Quite, a, quite a nice shot, a high bouncer into the upper corner. Aiken really couldn't do much about it. Okay, it's going to be Griswold and John Tunney facing off the midfield now, 4-4. Like we anticipated, Frank, the faceoffs are going to be key here, possession of the ball. Oh, and Carolina controls the ball. Number eight, 18, Jeff Homer brings it down. Mike Schuler picks him up. He's going to go to the goal. Shot saved by Phil Aiken. He controls in the crease. He was and interfered. It's going to be an interference penalty. The generals will keep the ball. Nice save by Phil Aiken. Real nice. He handled that low bouncer, scooped it right up, kept possession of the ball. And he was hit in the crease, so generals get the ball in midfield. All right, generals will get the ball in midfield. An interference penalty against UNC. Mike Schuler will take the ball right at midfield. I guess it would be kind of hard to get into that, that offense from the midfield. Right, it really would. Uh, you got to either have a timeout or a possession of the ball in the back line so you can form the shell and so on. Shula brings it down by himself. No, that's Sensilio. And Stagatis, uh -huh. no, Stagatis is beaten to the end line. Beaten to the end line by number 13, Gary Burns, the senior defenseman. That's what Carolina's going to have to do. They lost possession of the ball there. They just outran the man to the ball. And the rule there is the man closest to where the ball went out when it went out. So you not only have to be at the back line, but you have to be closest to the ball. Rob guys can't believe it. And Tommy Sears, the UNC goalie, brings the ball up from behind the goal. Kind of slow. And no one's challenged him yet. He just walked the ball up till someone comes and picks him up. 13-25 left here in the first half. Tie score, four up. Sears still has the ball just walking up. There's Heimert on him. And now, I uh, can't, looks like they gave the ball to Homar. Yeah, they did. Homar slows it down. Passes out to 25, Kevin Griswold. Griswold gives it off to uh, Johnny Basil, number 10. Homar's got the ball back. He's looking for someone to get rid of it. Almost runs into his own man. Good defense right now by the Generals. That's number 33. Three, Steve Conboy on, okay, Steve Conboy on home by Mike Burnett, leading scorer, has a ball behind the goal, and that looks like Dave Nichols, yeah it is, Dave Nichols on Burnett, Burnett makes his move, still behind the goal, look for someone to pass it off to, Burnett behind the goal, behind it comes along, around the left side, look, pass on the crease, shot and score by number 18, that's Jeff Homer, so UNC takes the first lead of the game, five to four. That was a nice feed by Renetti as he worked the left side of the goal. He just looked for his man, found him about 15 yards out in front, right in the middle. Omar had an uncontested shot, banged it home high. All right, the Generals are going to have to score here again. They can't get too far behind a team like UNC because they can't go into the stall offense. All right, it's going to be Tunney and Griswold facing off. 
Who, also in on the midfield for the Generals are number 26, Mike Shula, number 2, John Sancilio. UNC, the Lakers still in the goal for the Generals. UNC now has a lead. Who knows, they may use go into this stall offense just out of principle. <laughs> uh, no possession yet. And looks like Carolina's got it. And Tommy Sears chasing the ball. He's out of bounds. The Generals are going to... No, that's it. He's going to keep the ball. No, General's ball. Sorry, General's ball. And here comes, comes Armadillo the team. The, All right, the big Armadillo team now. That's number 33, Steve Conboy in there. Uh, Tim Shore is a pretty big guy himself. Dave Nichols comes down, Mike Pressler. And they'll give the ball to the small man on the field with the small goalie stick, uh, Robbie Carpenter. The idea there, of course, is just to get him to jump in the middle and protect them as he's the smallest and he he can be covered the most by UNC these big fellas. defense is well one man that's uh, Jamie Allen goes out to I don't know if he's going to challenge him or just look him over everyone else Tommy Sears is kneeling down in, inside the crease Jamie Allen looking for a place to stick his stick in there get the ball uh, he's patting everyone in the butt alright clock ticks down now under 12 minutes left in the first half generals down by one five to four Coach Emmer said he'd use this offense if, if he was down by one goal, and that's the situation he finds him in right, himself in right now. And sure enough, he's sticking to his game plan, and the generals are just going to hold the ball. I think Coach Emmer's philosophy there is that, that if you can be down by one goal against the number one undefeated team in the country going into the fourth quarter, then that's a good situation to be in, and we'll play them full up from there. All right. 37, John Haas, no defenseman, and 13, Gary Burns, make, start walking over, looking for an opening. Uh, Tommy Sears is just sort of laying, sitting down, leaning against the goalpost right now. Nothing else for him to do. Uh, North Carolina attacker all on one knee. Uh, they're trying to stick their sticks in over the top. Over the top. That's John Haas right there. He's got his stick in the middle, and he's trying to pull it out. And the referees in the middle, I guess they don't see anything. Uh, there it goes again. Haas is sticking his stick in over the, over the top of everyone, trying to break up this interlock. The WL men have their arms interlocked. <laughs> Clock ticks down now under 11 minutes, 10.40 left in the first half. And the UNC defenders are walking away again. You can hear the crowd, they like it. I guess they just want to beat North Carolina. They don't care how they do it. I think they're just not sure, nev never seen anything like this before, and they're not sure what they're seeing, and the excitement of originality here is... Maybe they all realize this is a historic and historic date in the, in the world of lacrosse. That's what I was thinking, Frank. What if this offense works and WNL beats North Carolina here. Next week, five or six teams use the same game plan against other teams. Do you think Coach Emma will use this offense again? I can't think of anyone he'd really have to use it against. Maybe Syracuse. That'd be the only team. I don't think he will. I, don't, I'm, I definitely know that he's talking about going back and playing good, clean, wholesome, all-around, everyday lacrosse. And I, a lot of players on the team feel that way also. They'd rather be able to go out there and run up and down the field with North Carolina. But in reality, after last week's game, we learned a lesson, and Coach Emmers has a n totally new game plan to attack, attack the opponent in a different way, and All so right. far it's worked. Generals have been in this for now almost three minutes, uh, under about a, nine minutes and 25 seconds left in the first half. UNC is not even trying to break it up. They're just got content to let the Generals stand there until the halftime. Really, Coach Willie Scroggs of the UNC must have, must be, have stuff thinking about some way to solve this. They'll probably come up with a game plan at halftime, I would imagine. Coach Emmer's five feet out on the field. And there goes John Haas again, trying to stick, trying to get his stick in over the top, looking for an open space. What the generals need, well, I'm sure they're content just to hold the ball the rest of the quarter, but what it'd be nice if they could get a flag and go ahead and attack a the North Carolina go a man up and possibly tie the score. I would, I would look for them to break out of it, Frank, with maybe a minute left or half a minute left and go go to the goal, run a play, try to get a score and tie it up at halftime, which wouldn't be a bad situation at all. Coach Emmer must have some confidence in his offense if he's content to run this with, with down by one against an explosive team like UNC, though. He must know that in a pinch, his midfielders and his attackmen will be able to put the ball on the goal. It's funny here, Frank, if uh, 
the home listeners could see the benches, both benches, players are just sitting down on the ground on the bench. Not too much activity, not too much cheering going on. It seems like it's just a waiting game, the clock and the and the armadillo offense. I guess UNC must now be over the phase of uh, over the stage of being frustrated. They're not yelling anymore like they were at the beginning of the game. They're sort of standing around, checking out the armadillo. At least it's a nice day to stand around. <laughs> Hardly a cloud in the sky. It's not supposed to rain. It's supposed to be in the se up to 70 today, 75 tomorrow. What would be interesting to see here, Frank, is all the UNC players now are around the armadillo offense, even the goalie, is to see him break out of it. Uh, they may foul someone as a moving pick, but to see him break out in a hurry, I think they could race to the goal and probably beat Sears there. Uh, I know they have a play uh, in, the, in the game plan where they do break out of it, but We'll have to wait and see when they use it. Okay, the generals of Armadillo has attracted a small crowd down there at that end of the field. All the photographers want to get lots of pictures of this. <laughs> it be something to have. Even the field maintenance men are over there looking at it, saying, I'm sure they haven't seen too much lacrosse, but this has got to be a first. I've seen lots of lacrosse, and this is a first. <laughs> trying to round up his troops to crease as two or three of them gather around, talk out the situation as the rest of the defense pokes around at the armadillo. This uh, is the UNC players are constantly talking to the referees though, trying to get their two cents in, working the referees like they do in basketball, I guess. I don't know if the referees should be able to take all this stuff they must be catching from both sides this entire game. Yeah, sure, Frank. Uh, both coach knows that he has to get his influence in on the referee and uh, make sure that he knows what's going on and what, what their approach is and what they're trying to do here. UNC is substituting on the fly, which isn't too much of a problem. There's Peter Vogel coming in now. Looks like UNC may be bringing in some of their big boys also. Maybe they're going to battle it over. Uh, not too many fans have left. I can still see people coming to the stadium now. It stands of, well, most of them have filled up at least, except for the far portion. That's never filled up. It's been great, Frank. No one's left. I haven't seen a soul leave the stadium yet. Uh, stand, like you said, the stands still are full, and although there's not too much action, everyone's sitting, enjoying the sun. A few shirts are off, and catching some rays. I wish this press box turning into covered. a social event. <laughs> <laughs> the press, but if this box wasn't covered, you could probably get a suntan. They're going to have to make some rule changes after this game, I think, Frank. Uh, especially considering the goalie stick, it's unlimited length or shortness, and the pocket also is, you can have it as deep as you want. Now, this is one stick you're allowed on the field with these conditions, and WNL's taking advantage of it and giving the goalie a short stick, and they're using that long stick right in the armadillo. All right. Uh, well... It's not a whole much, lot we can say. We can just sit here and explain what's going on. And now everyone's nearly, they're leaning. Looks like the North Carolina players are getting down on their backs trying to get under the armadillo, under the shell. That looks like number even 36. The, even Stenerson. the refs down on the ground now trying to well, look he's looking the, for penalties. There's yeah. Stenerson. Now he's crawling in under them. If the generals could get a man to break out with the ball right now, it'd be an almost sure goal. I think many of the fans now have stopped paying attention to the game and are just sort of socializing. Boy, the photographers are really having a time down there with the referees crawling on the ground underneath the shell looking to see if there's any fouls and the defensive players all gathered around trying to figure something out. All right, almost, well, four minutes and nine seconds left here in the second quarter. The generals have been in this for over five minutes now, maybe six or seven minutes. They've been working this style. This, this must be the longest period so far of the game that they've been doing this. That's right, Frank. I think uh, when North Carolina exploded there for five goals, I think they really wanted to prevent that from happening again. They just really can't run with them. They don't have the manpower or the firepower, so they're going to take holding the ball for a while and go into half with down by one goal or possibly tie it up. All right. Under four minutes left, three minutes and 30 seconds left. Sears is back in the crease. The rest of his defensive union is, is surrounding the armadillo, looking for breaks in it. But with the size of the men, WNL is down there forming the shell. I don't think they're going to find. Uh oh. Ball dropped the ball. Out. Ball's loose. Ball's loose. Here comes a fast break. 
Generals are going to have to. I don't know who's got the ball. Fast break. Peter Vocal, 21. Peter Vocal. No chip. Oh, he saved it. Phil Beautiful Hanks save. Saved the ball with the short stick. He saved that with a short stick, no less. And Carolina's going to keep possession of the ball. Phil Aiken comes up with a big save with the with the attackman stick. Good effort by Phil Aiken. That was almost a sure goal. All right, UNC will get the ball on the side. That's the second time Brent Vogel's been thwarted on a fast break and one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. And that time it was more to the credit of Phil Aiken than the discredit of Brent Vogel. All right, here comes, uh, that's number. That's Peter Vogel with the ball. He's got John Buterazzi on him. Vogel starts, trots behind. He's got Buterazzi on him. He's behind the goal now. Moving to, his, moving to the right, circling the goal. Look for a man to feed. Ball's loose, ball's loose. Nice check by Buterazzi. Mike Presser picks it up. Burnett breaks up the pass, though, and UNC will keep possession of the ball, and Burnett has it. Burnett has it behind the goal. He's looking for someone to feed. There's a man. He's, he's got Stenerson wide open. Save by Phil Aiken. One-on-one -on -one save by Phil Aiken. That's two in a row by Aiken. Stenerson knocks the ball back in, on. and Peter Vogel picks it up. Goes to the goal. Another save by Phil Aiken. That's three in a row. I didn't see who took that shot. You got Dave Nichols over there after the ball. One man against three. Generals really need possession of the ball here. That's three ground balls in a row. Three nice saves, but we haven't been able to get possession of the ball. And the ball is loose there again. It is. It's be Generals ball. It is. There it is. Carolina. Carolina just threw the ball out of bounds. Uh, Dougie Hall was wound up to take a shot, held off on the shot, slipped and fell, tried to dish it off to the man next to him, but went over his head and out of bounds. Good, good effort by Phil Aiken. Stopped three shots in a row there. All one-on-one -on -one shots. Keep the Generals within one with about two minutes left in the first half. All right, Mike Shearer's got the ball, and he's going to take up the field himself. He's out of bounds. He gets hit. Mike Burnett puts a hit on Mike Schiller. Schiller steps the line, and Carolina will get the ball back at midfield. Minute 54 left. Carolina's got the ball. Generals send in their defensive unit. Tim Shore comes in. And John Buterazzi. All right, here comes Griswold's got the ball out front to the, to the left. He keeps the ball, looking for someone to pass to. He's in the middle, just outside the restraining line. Tosses the ball back to Brent Vocal on the side. He's got Newton Kendrick on him, passes into the middle. Homer behind the back, doesn't work. Mike Burnett picks it up. Nice check there by Mike Presser on number 19, Dave Wingate. Aiken's got the ball, and he starts trotting up the field. He's got Sansero up in the middle. No, he decides not to try that pass. He tosses it back to Newton Kendrick. Kendrick takes it back behind the goal. Burnett is on him, and so is Brent Vocal. He gives the ball back to Aiken. Aiken starts back up the other end of the field. Look for someone to pass to. There's Stu Keeney in the middle. There's Keeney in the middle. Keeney's picked up. Aiken puts a move on his man. Nice pass by Aiken into Stu Keeney. Gets it across the line. Keeney's got the ball for the Generals. Gives it out to Mike Shearer up by the straight line. Now Sansura has got it. 59 seconds left in the first half. Shot, no. I couldn't tell who that was. That was Stuart Keeney yeah, on the crease Keeney. wide open, but it was a nice save by Sears. Now Sansura has got the ball. He makes his move toward the goal, loses the ball. Gets hit, ball's loose. No one has possession. Heimert's got the ball. Flips it out to Shearer. Shearer's got the ball. Two men on him. Gets the ball in to Stegaitis. Stegaitis is going to slow it down a little. 36 seconds left in the half. He, Try to go over the head on him, no penalties, Stigaitis is loose. On the crease, Heimert, no, Heimert tried to pass over the goal to Heimert. Heimert couldn't hang on to it. Schuller picks up the ball, he's got the ball, he gets hit, he gets decked. He gets decked and there's no call.